This will be a 170 for seven minutes. Mr. President, as I have indicated to my friend, the distinguished senator from Idaho, I have no particular thoughts with respect to this specific amendment, but I do want to say a few things in regard to the bill and other matters, Mr. President. First, on another matter, there is an adage among computer users that says garbage in, garbage out. What that means, of course, is that if unreliable or incomplete information is put into a computer, then unreliable or incomplete information will come out of that computer. Although garbage in, garbage out comes from the world of computers, the basic theory applies to other disciplines as well. For example, consider the question, do you support or oppose a constitutional amendment to require a balanced federal budget? As of February 4, 1995, 80%, we are told 80% of the American people say that they support such an amendment. My source is an article in the Friday, January 6 edition of the Washington Post. According to a poll taken for the Washington Post and ABC News, that overwhelming percentage buys in to the concept of a balanced budget amendment. Amazing. One would think that on the face of it, this extremely popular idea would have nearly no opponents. On the surface, if one went solely by that overwhelming percentage, one could say that this surely is an idea whose time has come. What is wrong with this Congress that it has not already passed this fabulous balanced budget amendment? How can anyone question its wisdom? That is the problem with a simplistic question. They usually provoke equally simplistic answers, but there is nothing simple about the constitutional amendment to balance the federal budget. If one looks a little closer at the same poll, the problem with any balanced budget amendment becomes glaringly apparent. There exists no consensus as to how actually to get to a balance of the budget. Of those who support a balanced budget amendment in the poll, the further question was asked, would you still support a constitutional amendment to require a balanced federal budget if it meant cuts in federal spending on welfare or public assistance for the poor? 59% said yes, they would. Now, this is not 59% of the 100%. It is not 59% of the total number of persons who are included in the poll. It is 59% of those who support a balanced budget amendment. In other words, it is 59% of the 80% of those who say they support a balanced budget amendment. Then the same supporters were asked if they would support the amendment if it meant cutting national defense or the military budget. 56% said yes, they would. Again, that is not 56% of the total. That is 56% of the 80% who support a balanced budget amendment. Then the same supporters were asked if they still would support the amendment if we had to cut federal funds for education. Only 37% said yes, they would. Now, that is not 37% of the 100%. That is not 37% of all those who were polled. That is 37% of the 80% who support a constitutional amendment. That makes a difference. Then the same supporters were asked if they were still on board if we had to cut Social Security. Only 34% said they would. We will say there are 100 apples on the table here and that the 100 apples represent the total number of persons who were polled 
on the various questions. 80% support, that would mean 80 of the 100 apples taken off the table. They all support the balanced budget amendment. But if Social Security is increased of those who support a balanced budget amendment, only 34% then would support the amendment. So if Social Security is included, only 34% of the 80 apples, or approximately 27% of the whole number, favor the amendment. So that would mean less than 34% of the 100%. In other words, only approximately 27 or 28% of the whole number would then support the balanced budget amendment. I ask the rhetorical question, are we beginning to see a pattern emerge here? there is vast agreement on a goal. In other words, balancing the federal budget, but virtually no agreement on how to achieve that goal among the general public. Let us understand one thing. If Congress passed the amendment today and we had to start moving toward that goal, virtually all talk of tax cuts would have to be abandoned. But this senator from West Virginia thinks it is absolutely folly, folly to talk about a tax cut at a time when we are talking about passing a constitutional amendment to balance the federal budget. We seem to be going in two different directions all at once, and we are going to meet ourselves head on. If we have a tax cut, and then if the constitutional amendment on the balanced budget is adopted, we may have to increase taxes to balance that budget. It cannot be ruled out. So what is going on here? We cut taxes one day and raise them the next. It is going to be much more difficult to raise taxes than it will be to cut them. I think we ought to stay on the course we are on, that being to attempt to balance the budget. And we have had two good efforts in 1990 and 1993, in both of which years Congress passed legislation that reduced the rates by which the deficits were growing and actually made reductions over a period in the deficits. That is the course we ought to stay on, and that is not an easy course. But now to forsake that course and say, well, let's have a tax cut. That is flying in the face of the strong efforts that have been made in 1990 and 1993 to bring about a reduction in the deficits and to move on a glide path toward a balanced budget. It does not make sense. We ought to be thinking of our children and grandchildren. No, we want to cut taxes now for political purposes. Cut taxes now. Do something for ourselves. Forget about the kids. Forget about the children down the road. Let us shift this burden over on them. Shift it over to them. Let us have the tax cut now, though. Let our children and grandchildren and their children worry about it. That seems to me to be very short-sighted, very short-sighted. I would rather see the president and the Democratic Party stay on the course we were on of balancing the budget, of reducing the deficits. I think it is not only poor judgment, but it is wrong to talk about a tax cut now. It is easy to cut taxes. Nobody likes to vote to increase taxes. I do not like to vote to increase taxes. But I am not going to join in the rush to cut taxes at a time when we have budget deficits in the $200 billion range and a national debt that is $4.5 trillion. Talk about declaration of rights, petition of rights, bills of rights, and all these things. I think we might better not be a part of any declaration of rights for posterity.